Isaac is all about this um, this very topic of asking for guidance um, and then receiving it and following it or um, there were times where I was actually praying and saying, writing down, I can't hear you. Where are you? <laughs> I can't hear you. Jesus, where are you? Holy Spirit, I can't hear you. And what blocks hearing the Holy Spirit is fear. Um, and so when we're afraid of hearing and we're afraid of what might be asked of us, then there there is a block in the mind to hearing it and part of the mind is actually saying no i don't want to hear i don't know what might be asked of me so i actually looked at the course this morning and there's a some really beautiful parts in here about that where jesus talks about the fear of actually hearing the Holy Spirit and here is an amazing line that sums it up you believe that to ask for guidance of the Holy Spirit is to ask for deprivation isn't that profound you think that to ask the Holy Spirit for guidance is to ask for deprivation so you wouldn't want to know, would you, if you think that what you're going to hear is going to deprive you of something and take away something. But the answer to prayer, he shares, everyone who ever tried to use prayer to ask for something has experienced what appears to be failure. This is not only true in connection with specific things that might be harmful, but also in connection with requests that are strictly in line with this course. The latter in particular might be incorrectly interpreted as proof that the course does not mean what it says. You must remember, however, that the course states, and repeatedly, that its purpose is the escape from fear. Let us suppose then that what you ask of the Holy Spirit is what you really want, but you are still afraid of it. Should this be the case, your attainment of it would no longer be what you want. The Bible emphasizes that all prayer is answered, and this is indeed true. The very fact that the Holy Spirit has been asked for anything will ensure a response and yet it is equally certain that no response given by him will be the one that would increase fear the holy spirit does not want to increase fear and so if you're asking for something that you're afraid of receiving and you're afraid of hearing then it's unlikely that it's going to get through to you so it's possible that his answer will not be heard. It is impossible, however, that it will be lost. So an example for that is, um, sickness. Like sickness is, is a defense against the truth. And the cause of sickness is um, a decision in the mind to choose littleness over strength in the moment because it's safer you know? and if uh, like as a child sometimes a child will say I'm sick I'm hurt I can't I can't and really they just they don't want to do what's being asked of them and so they play little or play sick and I've had some very profound experiences myself with this where I was in Argentina I had a group of students and I was working with um, one student in a very deep assignment and when I was very direct with her, um, her anger and rage would come up and she would swear at me. And this happened a couple of times and I just started to pull away and feel this resistance to, com to being direct with her. Even though she was saying to me, please, please help me through this. I want to undo the ego. I really need your help. 
you know, don't be put off by my anger. It's just the ego. But anyway, after a few days, I'd, I'd been avoiding her and I started to get sick. I had flu symptoms. At the same time, a killer flu virus was going around Buenos Aires. People were dying. And I got more and more sick to the point where I was laid up in bed and cancelling my course groups. And, uh, and I had a very powerful phone call where Jason and Lisa were on Skype with me and put it on video. And Lisa, these are my mighty companions. They're in a different country. Lisa said to me, take up your bed and walk. I was like, what? How could you say that to me? I'm dying here. <laughs> And I, I looked at the thoughts and realized, you know, Jason said, what are you doing? Why are you sick? What are you avoiding? And then I could see very clearly that I had been afraid to be direct and I was pulling away into littleness and, and here I was laid up. And so with seeing that decision in my mind, um, I, I, I started to heal. And, uh, But it took a lot, like in that moment of making that decision, it was more than of a decision, not just to be physically healed, but it was to face what I was afraid to face. It was a decision to continue to be willing to take on this assignment and face this rage and projection that was coming in my direction. Because a lot of my life, you know, I, I didn't ever have to deal with that. If people were angry or raging, I you know, I could walk away and leave. But here I was in a Holy Spirit given assignment to be with it and face it and call on the strength of the Spirit. So here, you know, even as I was getting sick and I was praying and asking, I didn't really want to hear the answer of what was really the cause of my sickness. You know, it was a good few days until I was really laid up and then some mighty companions got on the phone with me and, and asked me directly and helped me look at it and helped me see. And then when I could see the choice, it was like, oh, do I want to lay here and die? <laughs> or would I rather face what I'm afraid of facing? And, and of course, as soon as I could see that decision, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do this. So he describes here, there are many answers you have already received, but have not yet heard. And I assure you that they are waiting for you. So if we're asking for guidance and we're praying for help and we don't seem to be hearing the answer, this is a really beautiful, uh, clear message from Jesus that your prayers are heard and the Holy Spirit is answering, but if there is fear of hearing the answer, then it won't get through to you just yet. And so this is where, um, at another point, Jesus says, "It's um, I can't take away your fear, but I can help you to see the conditions. I can help you see the conditions that seem to bring this fear into your mind. I can help you see the blocks to the awareness of love's presence or of the guidance. So that's where the inner inquiry is really important. Rather than continuing to ask for guidance, ask for new guidance and ask for new guidance, perhaps it's already there waiting. And the question needs to be, what am I afraid of losing? What am I afraid of losing if I hear the guidance? And then it's quite likely that it'll something will come into your mind. And then that's what can be given over to the Holy Spirit and trust. Mm -hmm.